So the United States government spent nearly $90 billion training the Afghan army, and yet that army collapsed almost immediately. How did that happen? Well, a 2009 report from The Guardian suggests one possible contributing factor. Many Afghan soldiers were high on the job. You don't have a helmet on. Helmet the Jeep doesn't have a rifle right now. Go How ahead. is he ready? It's like having 26 kids that I have to watch after. It really is. Ready would be on the road, staged, ready to move at 8.30. I think if they introduced drug testing to the Afghan army, uh, we would lose probably three quarters to maybe 80, 85 percent of the army. It requires telling them almost 30 times, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Come on, let's go. So that video is deeply offensive to people in Washington who have to cover up the waste uh, that they have perpetrated in our name over 20 years, but it's real. American soldiers in many cases had to teach Afghan recruits how to read and write and operate basic equipment. According to NBC News, 90% of those who enlisted were illiterate. That's worse than the national rate of literacy. Fox's Steve Harrigan recounted how ineffective our literacy training was today. Watch. I remember going to a graduation training class of Afghan soldiers and they all spun their diplomas around because they didn't know which letters were up. None of them could read after graduation. Anyone who's been around Afghan national government soldiers know that you have to do a mission before payday because when payday comes, they all disappear. So this went on for 20 years. And for some reason, most people didn't notice. Michael Tracy is an independent journalist. He writes on Substack. He just interviewed an Afghan veteran last month who called our entire presence in the country, quote, a big money funneling operation. He joins us tonight. Thanks so much uh, for coming on, Michael Tracy. So it's, it sounds like for those of us who are scratching our heads and asking, you know, why did we keep doing something that wasn't working? Maybe money is part of the answer. Well, the veteran that I interviewed and who was a member of the joint command that oversaw this supposed train and equip mission, that was exactly his theory. He saw that these defense contracting behemoths, which took as proprietary information the data that was supposed to be provided to the American public as to the status of those train and equip missions of the Afghan security forces, that data was essentially concealed from him as a military officer who was charged with following that process day to day. And so it was a, a systemic graft and corruption at the very heart of the intervention. And the reason why I think, as, as you seem to speculate earlier in the show, that we see such this strange outburst of indignation is because there are so many people in the media, in the political class, and across the entire system of essentially American governmental process that benefited personally, financially, reputationally from what in essence was a failed intervention. And there are plenty of guys who are on the front lines who saw it firsthand, who will attest to the reality of that failure, even if they're the generals and the national security advisors and the people who sit on corporate boards now and pontificate on TV, even if they have a very inter different interpretation. It, this was an epic, colossal failure, and frankly, it's incumbent on the entire bipartisan political class, which facilitated this nightmare, to, to reflect and so to fixate needlessly on the logistical details of the withdrawal, it's legitimate, you know, that it's open to criticism just like anything a president does. But, but I think that shouldn't distract from a thoroughgoing self-criticism as to how we even got here in the first place over 20 years under presidents of both parties. I, I read yesterday the total coverage on the network nightly news of Afghanistan for the past five years was like essentially zero. I mean, prostate health got 10 times as much coverage as the occupation of Afghanistan. Do you, do you have any hope that we will get a clear accounting of like what we've been doing there for decades? Oh, yeah, I'm sure all the operatives on TV these past few days who are posturing as though they're these pure-hearted humanitarians 
who are so deeply concerned about Afghan women and girls. I'm sure they'll be leading the charge for this after-action report on how the American global hegemony suffered this blow. I mean, I would definitely trust them and their judgment to oversee that process. No, I mean, this, this, uh, so much of the narrative in the media as, as, as regards to this withdrawal is, is a total joke and it's self-absolving for the people who had a direct role in enabling such a systemic failure. Self-absolving, that is a great way to put it and absolutely true. Michael Tracy, thank you very much. Thanks. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.